So, you want to build a nuke, eh? Well, for that, you'll need some uranium. Uranium is a radioactive element. It has many uses, including curing cancer, generating power, and making people immediately stop fucking existing. Anyway, once you've mined some uranium, you'll need to enrich it. Why? Because isotopes. If you vary the neutrons in an element, you get different cosplay versions of that element. And the version we want here is Uranium-235, because it's good in bombs and shit. So it's off to the centrifuges for some whizzy fun time, and soon you'll have shiny apocalypse cookies before you can say nuclear holocaust. And if you're still serious about building this thing, we'll need to talk about fission and fusion. Thanks to this smoking hot piece of physicist booty, we now know you can make a little bit of mass into a lot of energy. And one way of doing that is via fission. Fission is when you give big atomic nuclei a bonk and convert them into smaller nuclei, and you get loads of energy from that. It's how nuclear reactors work, and also bombs. Fusion is the reverse of that basically, where nuclei combine. It's how the sun works, and also BOMBS! In a fission bomb, the goal is to get the uranium to release neutrons. One can do this via explosives, or claiming to have engaged in sexual intercourse with the uranium's mother. These neutrons will hit the unstable nuclei of the rest of the uranium, and at that point, well, whatever argument it was that led you to detonate this thing, let's just say, you won that one. But if you're really pissed off, then you'll need a fusion bomb. This is a double whammy. The first stage is fission, then switches to fusion, creating essentially a star on Earth. Anyway, that's your nuke built, so it's off to the races, baby. Well, we'll need somewhere quiet to test it out. How's about somewhere near the Jornado del Muerto Desert in New Mexico? Lovely little spot for a picnic. Make sure to bring some jam, those little triangular sandwiches, and a crippling certainty that thanks to you, humankind will forevermore be held hostage by itself. The first ever nuclear device is detonated on July 16th, 1945, codename Trinity. The device explodes with the equivalent power of 22,000 tons of TNT. Later, Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb, will say, I remember the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Just under a month later, the B-29 Enola Gay will drop the fission bomb Little Boy over the Japanese city of Hiroshima. It will explode with the power of 15,000 tons of TNT. Above will preside a mushroom cloud 60,000 feet high. Below, 70,000 people are immediately incinerated and mutilated by a shockwave travelling faster than the speed of sound. Thousands of people who are not killed in the initial blast will be exposed to ionising radiation, suffering the effects for decades to come. Hemorrhaging, cancer and genetic mutations. Three days later, a second bomb called Fat Man will be dropped on the seaport of Nagasaki. At least 60,000 people will be killed. Japan will surrender three weeks later, and the governments of the world will almost unanimously agree that this must never happen again. Not intentionally, not by accident, not by ignorance. In 1947, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists devised a doomsday clock with midnight representing absolute global catastrophe. Today, the clock stands at 100 seconds to midnight. Pretty bad, but frankly it's hard to see what they're getting their little lab coats in a twist about, eh? World War II was ages ago. The threat of nuclear war is long gone. Other than, well, okay. In 1961, several four megaton nukes might have slightly fallen out of a B-52 over North Carolina, one of which narrowly avoided detonating because of a single safety switch. But okay, other than that, well, in 1962, a Soviet patrol submarine might have slightly lost contact with the land, the captain, assuming World War III had already started, and was about to fire a 10 kiloton nuke torpedo at a nearby US fleet before the flotilla commander could calm him down, and maybe 1967, when a solar flare took out a few NORAD radars, the US might have slightly freaked out and almost launched a bomber counter-strike against the Soviet Union. Then 1969, North Korea shot down a US radar surveillance plane, President Richard Nixon, allegedly drunk, gave the order for a nuclear strike in retaliation. Luckily, Henry Kissinger stepped in, and we're still here. Or just the entire Cold War, basically 40 years of unrelenting nuclear panic. And then you remember the precarious state of mutually assured destruction. Which is, well, 
When a mummy country and a daddy country hate each other very much, sometimes they get embroiled in a nuclear standoff. And one little deterrent against pushing the button is the knowledge that in the time it takes for your missiles to reach your enemy, your enemy will have kindly fired theirs back at you. The idea is that if you're rational, neither of you are going to strike first. Until you remember that humans are not rational, we are, I believe the anthropological term is, fucking morons. Currently, nine countries have nukes, that's the US, Russia, France, my homeland of crumpets and self-hate, Pakistan, India, Israel, the Upper Tea Korea, and of course, China. And that's not to mention, several countries probably have hypersonic nuclear missiles now, which can fly upwards of five times the speed of sound, rendering modern missile defense systems about as effective as putting up a little sign that says, Ah, oh, don't nuke us, mate. You said you wouldn't. What are you doing? You said you wouldn't. Why are you... Oh, for fuck's sake, you're such a dick. Or rather, if these puppies launch, in the words of the motto of the US Postal Service, Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night shall stay these couriers from swift completion of their appointed rounds. It's a hundred seconds to midnight, baby. Nuclear Armageddon ain't gone anywhere. The Cold War ended in 91, but the real war, the silent war, has only just started because we discovered a 23rd century technology in the 20th century, and we're too primitive for this shit right now. And ironically, nukes are so prevalent in entertainment and media that we've almost forgotten this is real, that if we aren't constantly vigilant, apocalypse could happen any time and it would be the end of everything, including possibly the only instance of life anywhere in the universe, all just because of some mental general or dick dictator. As Einstein allegedly said, I know not with what weapons World War 3 will be fought, but World War 4 will be fought with sticks and stones. Anyway, have a lovely week, won't you?